All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about a very basic distinction between types of living organisms. We're gonna talk about prokaryotes and eukaryotes and, and sort of the different types of cells that they're made of. So I just wanna emphasize that, that um, we're gonna talk more about these tree of life diagrams later, but essentially we're arguing that, that all organisms um, have many things in common and so um, have a common ancestor at the beginning of the tree of life. And then as, as time progressed, we're gonna argue that, that they kind of went down different evolutionary paths. And what we can do with diagrams like these that we'll be studying later is we can make predictions about who is more related to who in the history of life and maybe what happened in the history of life. And so we'll eventually try to justify this, this um, diagram that I've kind of created here. But essentially we're just gonna see that there's kind of two very broad groups that we can begin to, to think about uh, uh, having differences from each other. Um, and that's the prokaryotes, which includes the two types of bacteria, which I'll talk more about in just a minute. And then the eukaryotes, which is really everybody else except bacteria. Um, and, and perhaps we can also see in this diagram that they're kind of newer in, in life's history as well. So again, uh, the prokaryotes or the bacteria will eventually um, justify why we split bacteria up into two um, kind of two types of bacteria. We'll eventually talk more about the U bacteria and RK bacteria, uh, but we don't have much to say about that for now. And we have the eukaryotes, which again is everybody else, plants, animals, fungi, and I didn't have protists on the, the, the diagram uh, on the previous slide, and we'll eventually talk about why. Protists is a very kind of poorly defined group. Okay, um, and these are kind of eukaryotic cells that, that those organisms might be made of. Um, uh, I went through the other slide kind of quickly, but maybe you can just generally see that there's more stuff in them than the simpler prokaryotic cells. So what I'd like to do in this video is maybe kind of emphasize the unity of life first. So I've showed, I show a, a prokaryotic cell over here on the right, and I've got two eukaryotic type cells um, and the left and center. And I just wanna argue that there are three major structures that all of these cells have in common, that all these organisms have to have in order to be living cells. And so that's gonna be the cell membrane, DNA and RNA, which we've already kind of talked about, and ribosomes. And then we'll start to discuss some differences between the two types of cells. So let's go one by one. Um, we definitely want you to know these structures and what they do. These structures are so important. Obviously, if all living things have them, then they're going to be really important. And they're going to be the foundation for future conversations. We're going to talk about the membrane in a video in this unit. We're going to talk about DNA and ribosomes in uh, uh, future units uh, of molecular genetics. Uh, so cell membrane, let's talk about that first. Cell membrane can also be called the plasma membrane. Those are kind of the same terms. And uh, the, the function of the membrane is to control what comes in and out of the cell. Uh, cells want to be able to let in nutrients and, and keep out other bad things. Uh, they want to be able to let out wastes and then kind of keep in the things that they want to keep in. Um, I just want to uh, say for now that the cell membrane is not the same thing as a cell wall. There, we're going to see that some organisms that have cell walls also have cell membranes. You have to have a membrane, but not all organisms have a cell wall. And I'll talk more about the wall in a different video. Uh, let's talk about DNA and RNA next. Uh, where are those kind of in this picture? Um, definitely down here in the prokaryote, they show it pretty clearly. It's kind of this noodly looking stuff. Unfortunately, they don't really show it inside of this sphere. We'll, we'll name the sphere in just a minute, um, but the DNA is supposed to be inside. Um, sometimes textbooks will depict it this way because the DNA is kind of uh, typically in a form where it's too thin and spread out to be seen at this kind of typical magnification, so they, they actually don't show it. Um, just because it's small and thin and rather invisible at certain magnifications doesn't mean it's not important. Uh, we already uh, learned in our previous unit that DNA and RNA help code for all of the proteins that do all the chemical jobs around the cell. And so let's just kind of tie in the ribosome with that then too. Ribosomes are these little dots um, in both types of cells, pro, uh, eukaryote and prokaryote. And ribosomes just then take the instructions that are coded for in the nucleic acids, RNA and DNA, and they actually construct the protein correctly by taking the right amino acids and putting them together in the right order. So ribosomes actually build the proteins. Okay, um, so uh, that's pretty much all a prokaryote will have in their cells. They have a membrane for sure, uh, DNA and RNA, and ribosomes to build the proteins. Well, um, 
eukaryotes will have additional structures. And so let's just kind of broadly talk about the additional structures they might have. We'll talk about the nucleus um, and characterize it for sure. And then we'll just kind of talk about organelles in general because I have another video that kind of surveys the organelles. So nucleus first, what's the nucleus? The nucleus is gonna be the shell around the DNA. Again, the DNA should be in here kind of in its spindly double helix. Uh, and this whole structure then would be the nucleus. Um, and what's the nucleus there to do? It's really just a shell to protect that master code DNA from getting damaged or changed. Um, so uh, again, prokaryotes have DNA, they just don't have a shell nucleus around it to help protect it. Um, sometimes uh, people will talk about the nucleus as the control center of the cell. I'm really not a big fan of that definition. Um, it really is not a control center in any meaningful way. Um, so I'd much rather you think about it as a protective shell. Uh, organelles uh, would just be a generic term that, so again, this is something eukaryotes have that prokaryotes do not, uh, being newer cells. Um, it would be any of these structures that are, you're kind of seeing here um, that basically are like a, a separate compartment inside of the cell. As it turns out, they're gonna have their own membrane. So they can also control what comes in and out of them from, from the outside cytoplasm in their little compartment. Um, and that's going to be important because then uh, with kind of a separate environment inside, even from the cellular cytoplasm, they're going to be able to, to do their own specific jobs inside. And so we'll see eventually that that includes uh, structures like the mitochondria, the chloroplast. Um, and like I said, I have my, uh, another video that will kind of survey the different eukaryotic organelles. So again, all we're really trying to do in this video is talk about the unity of life. So all cells have to have a membrane, DNA, RNA, and ribosomes. Um, but there are differences between very simple cells, prokaryotes, and more complex cells, eukaryotes. And we just broadly saw that two uh, broad differences would be that eukaryotes have a nucleus around their DNA and they have specialized organelles.